This is very off the cuff, but I'm just gonna roll with it here. This is very off the cuff, but I'm just gonna roll with it here. A concept that's been on my mind heavily of late is time and how it's so finite and how we spend so much of our lives doing things that we actually don't want to do, speaking to people we don't want to speak to, holding on to relationships we don't want to hang on to simply because we feel like we have to or the sunken cause fallacy or sunk cause fallacy, sorry, comes into play where you've invested so much time into something that you feel like you need a return on investment from it. And I feel like I fell into that mindset heavily, or at least I used to, especially with relationships, because you put so much time into other people and money into other people and you create experiences with these people. You can't help but feel like it has to succeed. And then when it fails, you feel like you failed to a certain degree. And as I've been getting older, I've realized it's much better to spend your time on things and people and experiences that you won't regret than putting your time and energy into things that are fleeting, that you know if they left your life, it sucked in the intermediate time, but in the long term, it'd be much better for you. And I'll go back to the relationship example. That's why a lot of people stay in bad relationships because they're not looking big picture. They're looking at the short term. This is going to suck right now if I end this. So I'm going to stay here. But that just makes your long term health significantly decline, if that makes sense. How this relates back to time here and why I've been thinking about it. A lot of my life was spent, or at least the past like few years, I would say wanting to do more or wanting to step out of my comfort zone but I was too afraid to do so, mostly because of my own limiting beliefs or really, really just the limiting beliefs, but I didn't internalize it as that. And I, for years, would kind of dabble in things, but never 100% commit to them. And it's, it's around now, this year, is the past like six months that I've really I really decided you know or really really as of like you could say before the winter park or whatever but as of like the past six months and going forward I really just decided when I die one day what am I going to regret I'm going to regret the things I never tried so for me to continue to waste weeks or months of my life thinking of doing something but not actually trying is something I'll regret when I'm on my deathbed. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one who has to live my life. No one else. And I realized that I spent a lot of time having these limiting beliefs holding myself back because I was comparing myself to other people in their situations. And what are they going to think of me? Or what if I fail? But it's a, But another way I think about it is, okay... Let's say, what if I fail? Cool, I'll fail for it because I've actually tried the thing. And I'm like, okay, this didn't work, but I can pivot here, you know? Or another frame I've been thinking about it as is, look at the people who are successful, right? Some are around my age at 22. Some are younger, some are older. What's the commonality with a lot of these people? They're not inherently special. They're not inherently smarter than me or you. Some people are even, you could say, quote unquote, dumber, but doing it better, to quote Alex Ramosi, right? And as I've been contemplating this, I look around the world and think, if they can do it, why can't I? If these people can just pick something they're passionate about, dive into it and make it succeed, why couldn't I do the same thing? Why did I have all these doubts that, ah, you know, they could do it, but like, what if I can't? What if I fail? Like, I'm my own limiter. And realizing that has helped me see that time is so much more precious precious than what we give it credit for for me to spend my time contemplating the things I want to do when I could actually be spending that time doing the thing it doesn't make sense to me anymore and that's why I've decided you know 
I'm going to continue writing every day. I'm going to post every day. I'm just going to do these things that make me uncomfortable, but they're the things I actually want to do because I feel like sharing a message and like showing my own growth because I feel like when people can see you grow in real time, they know what you say isn't fluff. And I feel like the point of being a human is to evolve. You're not supposed to stay in one stagnant mindset for like your entire life. Man, I'm sorry if this is like all over the place because I'm really doing this off the cuff. But moral of the story here, because our time is so precious, it should be spent doing the things we actually want to do with people we value, with endeavors that will give us meaning, not give meaning to the opinions of the people that we're intaking, you know? Because I feel like a lot of times, or at least for me, a lot of what I've done is just because I feel like it's what I should do because of other people's input. When now I'm thinking, you know, what do I actually want to do? Because at the end of the day, you have to live your life. No one's going to live it for you. Sure, people can give their input. Some might be valid. Some might not be. But at the end of the day, you have to make the conscious decisions. You have to take the conscious risks that no one else is going to take for you if you want outsized returns compared to everyone else. At least, that's what I've been thinking about as of late. Let me know what you think down below. This was, I know, a bit scattered, but I feel like it's a message that not only I needed, but maybe at least one more person could benefit from my scatterbrain level of thinking.